An explosion rocked the Port of Miami last night. Could hurricane-damaged electric vehicles be to blame? Last night at 11.49 p.m., a shipping container reportedly carrying electric vehicles exploded with enough force to send large chunks of debris flying a considerable distance. Residents in nearby apartments stated it shook their entire building. Here you can see large pieces of shipping container, twisted metal, laying a significant distance from the burnt out shells of those electric vehicles. Thankfully, there were no injuries that at least reported at this time. While the investigation is still in its early stages, what we're seeing is pretty familiar. This video is sponsored by Blazestack Fire Investigation Software. Blazestack is a fully featured fire investigation case management platform that arson and fire investigators rely on to log, document, and report fire investigations. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. This isn't the first time we've seen incidents like this. In my video on the top five shipping related explosions involving lithium ion batteries, I talk about a shipping container on a rail car that exploded due to end of life lithium ion batteries. And here what we might be looking at is a very similar situation, but instead this time electric vehicles are involved. Reports indicate that the explosion involved a 20 foot shipping container. Typically, these containers are used to transport two vehicles. Here's a diagram to give you an idea on how these vehicles are typically arranged inside these containers. Damaged or compromised electric vehicles, especially exposed to salt water, they can off gas highly flammable smoke or gas when their lithium ion batteries fail. If that smoke builds up inside a sealed shipping container, it creates a perfect mixture for a catastrophic explosion. When this container exploded, residents a decent distance away, not only did they hear the explosion, but then they saw the thick black smoke off in the distance. If you look closely at the wreckage, you can make out what appears to be the shell of two vehicles. The damage suggests a violent release of energy consistent with flammable gas accumulating and igniting in that confined space. This aligns with what we've seen in similar incidents involving lithium ion batteries and electric vehicles. But the bigger issue, when these vehicles become compromised, flooded out, or damaged, we have no idea when they might fail. It could be days, weeks, or even months later. There was a vehicle flooded out in Hurricane Ian that sat 308 days in a salvage yard before finally bursting into flames. In my interview with Chief Rice, we discussed the dangers of EVs that have been flooded out in storm surges, especially after hurricanes. It's typical for flooded out vehicles in general to be loaded onto ships for transport to other countries. When this happens with EVs, there's a significant risk. Efforts to prevent this, they're ongoing, but incidents like this show just how critical proper handling and transport procedures are. These types of explosions, they're exactly why I've been advocating for stricter shipping regulations, like the introduction of the Class 10 placard. But with that video, my focus on that Class 10, it was just for end-of-life batteries or DDR batteries, damaged, defective, or recall batteries. But maybe we need to indicate damaged vehicles as well, those damaged electric vehicles. At a minimum, we shouldn't be shipping any suspect lithium-ion batteries in hard-sided and sealed containers. Of course, it's important to note that this investigation is ongoing and we won't know the full details probably for some time. But incidents like this, they highlight why these conversations are so important for public safety, shipping standards, and first responders. Picture this, firefighters show up on scene for a smoke investigation. They walk up to a shipping container and they've got gases coming out of that shipping container. It's possible it could explode, killing first responders. We don't want to see that happening. First responders need to know what's inside those containers. I'll continue to follow this story and keep you updated as more information becomes available.